Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to be looking at DxO's HSL filter with a really nice special feature to it called the Uniformity Slider. You'll find it in Nick Color Effects, which is a part of Nick Collection 6. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today's episode is about color and what I want to do is open up Nick Color Effects part of the Nick Collection 6 and I want to show you a DxO filter in there. This is a new filter. I think DxO introduced this filter around the summer of 2023 and that is the HSL filter but it has a special component to it and that is the uniformity slider. It helps you to get uniform color in your images or less uniform color in your images. It goes either way. And so I want to dive into that and show you the benefits of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Now to launch Nick Color Effects, I'm using the Nick Collection 6 palette, as you can see right here. If your palette isn't showing up, what you can do is come up to File, go down to Automate, and you will find the Nick Collection 6 palette here. Just give that a click, and then you'll see the palette on your desktop and then just look for nick 6 color effects and give that a click and that'll launch color effects and now here we are inside of nick color effects and on the right hand side of the interface you're going to find dxo filters we have three dxo filters clear view grain and hsl we'll be looking at hsl today now you might say hey dave a lot of software has an hsl filter and i agree with you that is 100 percent true but this one is special in the fact that it has a uniformity slider which i'll show you now this hsl filter you'll notice you know where's the we have hue we have saturation but where's the l where's the luminance and where is uniformity well, they're there, and I'll show you how you get to them. But right now, you see these different color swatches up here. Now, this white swatch, we're set here by default, where we can adjust all channels at once. And for all channels, the only sliders available to us are hue and saturation. And you can double-click on any of these sliders to reset them back to the zero position, or we can adjust the saturation. We can add saturation or take saturation away. And again, we can double-click to reset these back, okay? And as I said, I'm on all channels right now because I only have hue and saturation. But anytime you change any of these sliders here, you're going to get a little dot underneath the swatch of the color that you're on. In this case, I'm on all channels. I'm going to go ahead and just double click the slider and reset it. And by the way, if you come right here, see these two arrows, the up and down arrow. If you click right here, you can reset an active channel. That's the channel you're on. Or you could reset all the channels. So that's kind of nice to know as well. Okay. So right now, I have nothing adjusted. Okay. So here's what I want to do first. I'm going to click on this green swatch for the green channel. So let me click it. And you don't see a dot here because I haven't adjusted anything here. But now you'll notice I have hue saturation luminance and uniformity and again hue i'm just targeting green right so i can change the hue of the green tones you see that again double click the slider anywhere and it'll reset it back and then i could go to saturation and give it more saturation or less saturation double click the slider and reset it back and of course luminance i can take just the green color and make the green tones lighter or darker depending if I go left or right, left to go darker, right to go lighter. And again, double click the slider to reset it back. And as I said before, most of you out there know how to work with the HSL filter, which is something we do a lot when we're editing photographs. But now we come to uniformity and this one is special and unique and I love this slider. So let me show you what it's all about. In the Nick Collection 6, the uniformity slider is used to adjust the uniformity of the selected colors. When you slide it to the right, it increases the uniformity and the selected colors will have their hues pushed closer together, making adjustments more uniform. Conversely, when you slide it to the left, it decreases uniformity and the selected hues are pushed further apart. So adjustments are more varied. This allows for fine tuning the color adjustments in your images. So let's check it out. Right now I'm on green and you can also see that green has like a white border around it. So you can tell I'm on green. 
Now, I don't have a dot here because I haven't adjusted anything. But okay, so let's look at our green tones. And let's take the uniformity slider and drag it the whole way over to the right and watch these green tones. They'll get more closer to each other as I move this to the right. So let me start to move it. Can you see them? Now I'm the whole way over to the right. So they all look a lot more uniform, right? And you can have various degrees depending on how you adjust this slider. Now, again, if I double click anywhere in the slider, I go back to the original unadjusted image color. And that's for the color green. But now if I start to move this uniformity slider to the left, the hues will become more varied. So let's check it out. Look at the green tones, okay? The hues will vary. Do you see that? See how they're varying? And I could really move this the whole way to the left and they're really varied right now. And sometimes you want that. You want a little bit more varied hues in a certain color so you can move the uniformity to the left. But if you want to bring those colors more together, the greens start to adjust the slider to the right. And this can be very helpful in fine tuning the colors of your images. Now, let's say I like that uniformity, but then I might want to come and maybe decrease that saturation a little bit. So I'll come to the saturation slider and maybe drag this to the left a little bit just to bring that saturation on the greens down a little bit. And of course, I could come and adjust the hue if I needed to, but I like it. Let's try one more color here and let's go to red. But you'll notice now the green swatch has a little dot under it letting me know that I've adjusted it, right? So now let's go to reds. And what I like to do to find all the red tones is come to the saturation and drag the slider the whole way to the left. And whatever goes black and white, I can tell has red tones in it. Okay, so on this ham up here, this bread, these tomatoes here, and some of these herbs down in here, and of course, whatever these are, some kind of berries, whatever. But let's look at these tomatoes here. Let me go ahead and, again, I could double click on the slider or I could come to the up and down arrow and just reset the active channel. See, that's just going to reset the red channel, okay? So let's check the uniformity out. Let's look at these tomatoes here, okay? So now if I take this uniformity slider and I start to drag it to the right, see all the reds get more uniform. But now if I start to drag it to the left, we'll see more hue variation. You see that in the tomatoes? And that may look good. That's probably too much. And I'm also looking at the other red tones in here, like I don't like the ham right here, but I want hue variation, but not that much. I'm gonna take this uniformity slider, drag it a little bit more to the right. I want some hue variation, but I don't want to go overboard, and I think maybe right about here. Now, of course, you can always see a before and after by unchecking HSL. You can see there's before, and then check this again by left-clicking it with your mouse and see the after, or you could come up here to compare and just left-click and hold here. You can see there's the before, release the left-click, there is the after. Okay, so there's different ways that you can see before and after here. But there's that image, and let's say I'm happy with that. All I need to do at this point is click Apply. And by the way, you see right here, this is a nice little uh, checkbox, Convert to Smart Object. If I wanted to come back and retweak these colors, I could click this right here and convert this to a Smart Object, and that way I could come in and readjust this later. I'm not going to do that because I'm moving on, but I'm just going to click Apply right now. But I just wanted to point that out. And now I'm back in Photoshop. I have one more example and we'll be done. So it's this image here. What I want to do is just work on the grass. Again, I'll use the Nick Collection 6 palette and click on Nick Color Effects. And as you can see, Nick Color Effects is being launched. And here we are inside of Nick Color Effects. Now again, I'm working with HSL. And so I want to work on the grass because I think the grass doesn't look that natural. So what I'm thinking is I can add a little bit more hue variation here. So let's click on green and let's take the saturation slider and drag the whole way off just to verify. Yeah, that is definitely the grass. So I'm just going to double click anywhere in the slider to reset that. And now let's take uniformity. If I drag it to the right again, everything becomes more uniform and that doesn't look good, right? Of course, I could adjust the hue and try to make it look better. But what I think I'll do is I'm going to come back to the center here, double click it to reset it. And then let's start to move this to the left and get more hue variation in here. You see that hue variation? Now, if I go way to the left, it looks like the grass is starting to dry out. But if I come over to right to around here, I think that looks a lot more natural. 
And then, of course, I can maybe work with the hue a little bit. Let's maybe shift this hue a little bit more to the left and get a little bit, uh, make it look a little bit more grassy, maybe somewhere right around there. And let's give it a little bit more saturation. Okay, so now I'm getting some more yellowish tones in there. And I don't want to go too crazy here, but maybe right about there. Now let's just tweak this uniformity slider here a little bit. Take it a little bit more to the right. Okay, so now let me uncheck HSL. Now here is before and here is after. And I think that grass looks a lot more natural. And again, if it's too strong in saturation, maybe I'll just pull this back just a little wee bit. Maybe to like right there, like 18. Again, let me uncheck HSL. Here's the before and here's the after. And don't forget, we have a luminance slider, so we can lighten up the grass if we wanted to or darken it down a little bit. Maybe I'll just darken it down slightly, and it's only targeting green, okay? So just a little bit of darkening, maybe right there. And don't forget, we also have a compare up here. We can left-click and hold. There's our before. Release the left-click. There's the after. And then you have this, like, split screen where you can drag this across, see the before and after. Or you can click this button, you can see the before and after. The before is on the top, the after is on the bottom. If you want to see a side-by-side -side view, click the center circle right here, and you can see a side-by-side -side view. And now if we want to go back to a single view, click this button right here, and we'll go back. But there you go. But the uniformity slider, it's really great if you want to add hue variation to the image, move it to the left if you want to make the color more uniform. And again, you can work with any of these color swatches here move the uniformity slider to the right. And don't forget, you also have luminance, saturation, and hue for each one of these color swatches. And I think my saturation is still a little too much, so I'm going to take this slider and drag it a little bit more to the left to maybe right about there. Well, there it is, the HSL filter inside of Nick Color Effects with the uniformity adjustment, which is so helpful in fine-tuning colors in your images. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. Let me know your thoughts in the HSL filter and Nick Color Effects. Leave a comment in the comments section below. I'm just going to go ahead and click apply and send us back into Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and click this X to shut down this uh, Nick Collection 6 palette here. But there we go. On this image, let me shut this layer off. Here is the before and here's the after. And I think that looks much more natural. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Cully. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.